Munich, Fred Sanger was born exactly 100 years ago. He was to become one of the world's most influential scientists and is the only person to receive the Nobel Prize in Chemistry twice. The first time in 1958 for solving the sequence of insulin, the first full sequence of a protein at that time, and the second time in 1980 for his work on sequencing nucleic acids, RNA and DNA. He is the father of genomics. He started his academic career here at St. John's College at the University of Cambridge when he came in 1936 to study natural sciences. He settled for biochemistry in his final year. Biochemistry at the time was a relatively new subject and something that Fred found very exciting. He then went on to do a PhD in biochemistry. Our first stop today will be Department of Biochemistry. Fred had a Quaker upbringing, and as a pacifist, he was exempted from the military service during the war. He briefly worked in a hospital until he decided to start his PhD in 1940 in the Department of Biochemistry. He was able to finance his PhD himself, as both of his parents had passed away, leaving him financially independent. In the Department of Biochemistry, Fred picked up organic chemistry wisdom, and his PhD thesis on metabolism of lysine taught him about amino acid chemistry that would later come in handy. After his PhD, he was offered a job in the department. And in 1944, he started a project that would take him 10 years to accomplish with methods that he developed himself, namely solving the amino acid sequence of bovine insulin. In fact, Fred discovered that insulin consists of 51 amino acids in two chains linked by dulcified bonds. Fred's results showed for the first time that proteins have a unique sequence. He described that the arrangements of the disulfide bonds were particularly difficult to establish. His first Nobel Prize in 1958 was celebrated in this department and Celia Milstein, who had just come to Cambridge from Argentina with her husband Cesar Milstein, he himself, also later a Nobel laureate, remembers. Yes, it was fantastic. And I was, um, <laughs> in a way, angry with my husband because um, in the first uh, celebration, Fred signed many bottles of, uh, empty bottles of champagne. And I took that bottle with me to Argentina. And when we came back, I wanted to bring that bottle back. And Cesar would say, are you mad to bring a, an empty bottle? He didn't allow me to bring the bottle. <laughs> and then when the second time happened, I said, look, you see, we could have two empty bottles signed by Fred. <laughs> In 1962, Fred left the biochemistry department for the newly built Laboratory of Molecular Biology, LMB, on the outskirts of Cambridge. He was to join the founding group of scientists at the LMB that included Francis Crick, Sidney Brenner and Max Perutz. Our next stop is the LMB. On the way, we will pass his house at 252 Hills Road, where he lived for 40 years. Here, he would always come back and have lunch with his family during the week. Here at the LMB, Fred became the head of the protein chemistry division. Now his lab could expand, but as before, he continued to work experimentally by the bench himself. His lab was located on the top floor in this building. On why he started working on sequencing nucleic acids, he writes, with people like Francis Crick around, it was difficult to ignore nucleic acids or to fail to realize the importance of sequencing them. At that stage, it was clear that DNA was the material of the gene and built up of four nucleotides. And the genetic information was in fact clearly controlled by the order of the nucleotides along the chains. So again, Fred and his team set out to devise method to sequence nucleic acids starting with short ribosomal RNA and tRNA. In the 1970s, Fred started to develop methods to sequence DNA. This time, his approach was to use DNA polymerases and chain terminators. Fred was awarded his second Nobel Prize in chemistry in 1980 jointly with Walter Gilbert. 
for their contributions concerning the determination of base sequences in nucleic acids. Now I'm cycling off to the new MRC LMB. In 2013, the new LMB opened. The LMB has in the British press been called the Noble Factory. Its scientists continue to receive Nobel Prizes. To date, 2018, including Sir Greg Winter, there has been 12 Nobel Prizes awarded for work carried out at this laboratory. But so far, there has only been one double Nobel laureate from the LMB, and that is Fred Sanger. His dioxy sequencing method was rapidly adopted worldwide. His 1977 landmark paper describing the method, DNA sequencing with chain terminating inhibitors, has been cited more than 73,000 times. In 1983, Fred retires, moves out from Cambridge to a village and spends his time gardening, being with his family, and in his own words, messing about in boats. He had then worked at the bench for 40 years and changed the world forever. In the garden of Fred's home, Far Lees, I meet Mark Bretcher, colleague and friend who overlapped with Fred during his whole time at the LMB. Mark remembers Fred. Fred never looked as though he worked very hard, but of course he did. Always trying to find a quick and easy way of doing something. It could be quite trivial, but it, and he excelled in that. Mm -hmm. And so when you watched him working in the lab, I remember standing in the electrophoresis room. We used to run big sheets of paper for electrophoresis to spread things out on the piece of paper. You'd have an origin. You'd have to put all your samples at the top, dry them down at one end. And it had to all meet along the origin, all right? So it's quite tricky. And people would use pipettes and carefully do it. For it would take a wash bottle and just spray it with a wash bottle, all right? Like this. It was beautiful to watch, all right? And then at the last part, he'd just do it rather carefully. I mean, the, the, those guys who ran the lab really were exceedingly good people, in a way. Very fortunate to have been there.